What's up guys, Erica here, bringing you another video for today. Today's video is going to be a little more intimate because it's just going to be me sitting here in front of the camera talking to you guys. Um, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my vision and how my blindness is specifically happening and what it's kind of doing to my vision. Um, I got a really cool, I've actually had a couple of people reach out to me, especially on Instagram asking me more about my story and ask me more about my vision loss and how it really affects me. So today I'm gonna to go all into that so that you guys know exactly what I'm experiencing and how blindness affects people. Before we jump in, I want to ask you guys to please give this video a thumbs up at the end of it if you really like it. And also leave me a comment below if you have any questions. I love reaching out to you guys. I love connecting with everybody. So leave questions, comments, opinions, whatever you want to leave down there and I'll be sure to get back to you. Also be sure to follow me on Instagram if you're not following me there. I post so much more frequently on my Instagram um, and try to tell my story and empower people through that as well. I'm trying to get better at YouTube and I'm really working on posting more on here but you can definitely keep up with me on a more consistent basis on Instagram right now. Now let's just dive right in. Um, I'm, I'm going to break down one of the biggest myths about blindness for you guys. So a lot of people think that blindness means total blindness, lights out, nothing. And while that is the case sometimes, it's not always the case for everyone. So I like to explain blindness as a spectrum and it affects people in totally different ways. Now um, there are people who are legally blind all the way up to people who are totally blind where they cannot see anything. And then there's all types of vision loss in between on this spectrum that I like to explain vision loss as. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about my vision and what I see. I am currently totally blind in my left eye. So it is lights out nothing over there. If I close my right eye, I see blackness. Um, there's nothing over there. No light perception is the um, technical word for it. Now, in my right eye, currently, I see about 2150, 2175. Um, and if you don't have any experience with vision, that means whatever you see 20 feet away looks like it's 20 feet away. But for me, anything 20 feet away looks about 150 to 175 feet away. So it's a little different there. Um, I can't see details. I can't see um, any type of small objects. I can't read regular size print. Um, so whenever I read things, I use a magnifier um, on my phone or I will, if I'm reading long like uh, things on the internet or books, then I do audiobooks and I have a screen reader on my computer that kind of reads everything out loud to me. Because it's even with the zoom, I, if I technically zoom in on things, I can see them, but it's really strenuous on my eyes and it makes me like get headaches and really strain a lot. So I typically just have the voiceover feature. Grant is actually being really good today. He just did a lap around the camera, which made me a little nervous, but he has a toy right now, right behind the camera. So hopefully he'll stay there. Okay, but back to vision loss. <clears throat> So, in my right eye, I still do have that functional vision. Now, I also have some field loss, which means my visual field um, isn't as big or as wide as other people's. So, I kind of have a narrower field of vision. Um, so, if somebody approaches me on this side of my body, I can't see anything over here unless I turn my head. So, um, that is kind of a big blind spot for me. And then I really can't see anything over this way until you get about right here, and then it comes into my field of vision. So I actually have to turn my eyes or turn my head to be able to see stuff over there. But one more thing about my vision that is kind of important and totally almost left it out of here is that I can't recognize faces. And so that makes social situations kind of interesting for me because if I'm in a group of people, even if they're all my closest friends, I can't necessarily tell who is who 
based on what they, their face looks like. Now I can tell colors, um, what they're wearing, body shape, body language, and so a lot of times that helps me um, kind of tell who is who in social situations like that. But if you were my best friend or my mom and I was walking down the road and you passed me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to recognize you or know that that was you unless you said, hey Erica, it's Haley or something like that. So that's something that I always like to tell people right off the bat is I'm if I see you out in public like I'm not being rude. I honestly just cannot recognize your face because I can't see that well. So that's another interesting thing that comes along with vision loss. Now I have amazing voice recognition. So if a lot of times even if you don't say your name, I can still tell who you are by your voice. But it's very helpful if, um, and most of my close friends know this, if you see me out, just say, hey Erica, it's Jake, or something like that. That way keeps the guesswork um, a little bit easier on me and makes it a lot um, more easy for me to engage socially. <laughs> so, wanted to put this in here because I almost left it out and it's something that I come into contact with on a daily basis, so I thought it'd be interesting for you guys as well. Oh. One more thing, um, one thing that a lot of people ask me, oh, Grant, come here, come here, come here, Grant. No, don't touch the camera. Don't touch the camera. Oh, okay, okay, be careful. So one thing that uh, a lot of people ask me is how do I travel independently? Do I use a cane? Do I use a guide dog? Now, obviously, y'all have seen Grant and he is way too crazy to be a guide dog. He is not trained, he does not, He's not a service animal, not at all, he's just a pet. Um, I use a cane to travel independently, and I only use that cane whenever I need it. So I'm sure you've seen the typical uh, white canes that people who are blind use. I have one of those. It folds up really nice and tiny, and I keep it in my purse at all times and use it whenever I need it. So typically, situations where I would need it would be if I'm traveling alone, if I'm in an unfamiliar place, um, if I'm crossing any big roads by myself, or if it's a dark, um, dark area or a really busy area. So at conferences where there's a lot of things going on, they have that crazy carpet and there's like a ton of people there, then I'll use it. Or if it's a dark area, then I'll use it. But if I'm traveling in a familiar place, like around my home, even around my own city, as long as it's light outside, um, or if I'm with people, then I typically don't need it because I still do have that functional vision. Um, but of course, like I said, my vision is changing um, sometimes on a daily basis. And so um, I always carry it with me just in case because you never know what situation you're going to get in. And I never want to be in a bad or scary situation where I can't um, be independent or be confident in that situation. So that is my uh, little mobility piece in here. So that might kind of explain to you guys what my vision is like right now. Um, my vision is very really interesting because I have progressive vision loss, which means it's been changing my entire life and it's been progressively getting worse. Um, and when I tell people that, a lot of times people feel sorry for me or they say, oh, I'm so sorry, that must suck and all this stuff. And, um, I like to really encourage people that um, no one likes to be pitied and so I definitely don't want anyone's pity for that. Um, I use my story to empower other people, people with blindness or people with any type of disability or just interesting story or struggle that um, you can use your story to empower others and own it and use it, leverage it. Um, that's what makes you unique. And so I like to really encourage people whenever I do get that feedback of kind of pity or um, people telling me they're so sorry or things like that. I try to just encourage them that I'm fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me. I might be going blind, but that's not a bad thing. Um, it's just a part of my life that I'm, I'm dealing with and it's not a bad thing at all. I'm still obviously living an amazing life. Um, I have an amazing boyfriend, an amazing dog. I live in an awesome place in Greenville, South Carolina, right downtown, in the heart of everything. I travel, I obviously do fitness and all types of sports. 
So it's not limiting me in any way, shape, or form. It's just giving me a different perspective on life, which I think is actually really cool. I'm trying to use it to help other people, which is really fun too. Um, in some of my other videos, I have told you guys that how I've lost my vision and the reason that I'm experiencing progressive vision loss is because I had cancer when I was a kid. So I had a rare cancer in my eyes called retinoblastoma, and I have 14 tumors in uh, between my two eyes. Now most kids who have retinoblastoma only have it in one eye but I had bilateral, so it did affect both my eyes, and I had a lot of tumors compared to most people. Um, so originally, when my parents took me to the doctor when I was six months old, they wanted to remove both of my eyes, take them both out um, for safety measures, and put in prosthetic eyes. Um, my parents decided that, that they wanted to seek a second opinion, um, so they went to another doctor, and that doctor actually decided that he was gonna try to treat it. So I received radiation treatment. They didn't really know how to treat that type of cancer with chemotherapy back then, but they had this new radiation technology that they thought that they could try where it wasn't external radiation uh, like they use on most cancer patients. This was actually an internal radiation plaque. So from what I know, obviously I'm not a doctor and I was only six months old when this happened, but from what I was told, they sewed radiation into this plaque that they then implanted on the back of my eyes. Um, they left it there for a little while, let the radiation kind of do its work, and then they went back in and removed it a couple of months later. Um, well, that was an amazing thing because, Grant, don't hit the camera, buddy. That was an amazing thing because I've been cancer free ever since then. So for t over 20 years now, I've been cancer free, which is a huge, huge thing to celebrate. Um, but that radiation is obviously really damaging um, to my eyes and to my body. And so that is how I've been uh, experiencing the progressive vision loss, just from the negative effects of that. So I know I did a lot of talking. I actually probably did that. I was trying to talk quickly so that I, the video wasn't too long, but hopefully I wasn't talking too fast. Um, I hope that this kind of clears up maybe some of the myths that you've had in your head about blindness, and I hope it helps you answer some of the questions that you might have had about me in particular. I plan to make tons more videos. Um, I am obviously an open book and I'm happy to answer any questions or address anything that you guys may be wondering about. I hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you think. Um, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because I'm going to try to be posting a lot more frequently. Um, and yeah, I love you guys and thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.